Hi, welcome to Nancy Jean's Garden again. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers thanks to a wonderful session I had over on Lilac Lantern's site and I, her channel, and I'm really grateful for that. But I think some of you may not know why this is called Nancy Jean's Garden and why I've started it now. I started Nancy Jean's Garden because I had, I've read cards since I was 12. I've learned about all the other disciplines that sort of follow cards around, especially when I work psychic fairs. There was, everybody was in there doing everything. That's where I learned to meet up with crystals, which I came to love also. And, but I put off being on a YouTube channel because for obvious reasons, YouTube readers and a lot of them were more or less obsessed with politics and I don't read politics. And I put off doing it. And I guess I kind of used it almost as an excuse. I'm not gonna go over there and do that. So about in November, I had a dream one night and it wasn't just like a normal dream. It was a very vivid dream. And in that dream, I was standing in front of the wall that you see at the beginning of my program. And a voice behind me said, you've got a paintbrush, paint the wall. So I did have a paintbrush and I painted the wall. And as I painted the wall, it dissolved into this beautiful garden full of veggies and flowering plants and great fun things. And I thought, hmm. And then I turned around, and I said, um, what's on this paintbrush? This is all wall. And it said, it's all the tears and all the fear that's been building up in the last while. And you're going to help dissolve it away and give people a safe place to come learn how to become whole again. And so I decided after looking around at it for a while, I took the challenge and I have been working on that and creating that and creating content so that people can understand not just card reading, not just some of the stuff, just kind of a smattering of a lot of the different things so you can understand it. You can find people or find skills or find ways that you can become more aligned with the new energy and away from fear. Uh, fear is face everything and recover or F everything and run. And I will tell you in my almost 72 years, there is not a good enough pair of track shoes to outrun fear. So we have to learn how, how to face it, how to deal with it, how to bring love and attention into our heart and how to kind of get away from it. So that's what we're gonna do here. I, today, I always pull a card about my day and today's card was the earth child in I'm using the inner child tarot fairy tale tarot they're very big cards so you don't read a whole lot of them at once but the inner child is actually in a traditional deck is the world but what this deck says is this child has gone through all of the trials and all the tribulations and all the fairy tale tales that get it up to the 21 and in the tarot, if you don't know that, you go from 21, then you go back to the fool again. It's the ending of a cycle. And it says, when this card appears in your reading, a powerful and divine influences are gestating within your aura. Embrace them with an open mind. Remember how protected and nurtured you are by your invisible helpers, guides, teachers. You are never alone. Experience the universe, universal harmony emanating from the sun, the sacred nucleus of the solar system and become aware of the rhythmic beating of your own heart and of the universe, the radiant center of your body. The ancient saying is as above, so below is true for cosmic wisdom is encoded in your DNA and cells. Most of all, it's a sense of childlike wonder to fill your life. And what's interesting about this card is I just became aware of a person named Rory Duff. I'd kind of heard his name before, but not really paid much attention to it. He works with ley lines. And I just, and I will put in below this very interesting video if you want to go see it. And he talks about how on December 9th, that was two days before this is taped, a giant cosmic wave, when it talks about the cosmic waves and the beat of the universe came upon us. We've been going through some incredible magnetic shifts 
which a lot of people have been feeling and they're not sure, you know, it kind of makes you feel itchy on a psychic level. And these changes are really important. And as you know, we're going into the age of Aquarius. Uh, everyone's hearing about that. It's going to take a while to get there. None of those things happen overnight. But this big signal is Jupiter and Saturn meeting in Aquarius on the 21st of December. Uh, where And then from then on, they Jupiter and Saturn will go into what they call a cyanotic cycle, where they will meet every 19 and a half, 19 and a half to 20 years in an air sign. Now, what they've been doing for the last 200 years, they've been meeting in earth signs. And in earth signs, that's things you make, you do, you manufacture. As a matter of fact, when they started meeting up in the earth signs was the beginning of the industrial revolution. And we are now moving to a state of collective consciousness in the air signs where you just kind of know things, especially in Aquarius this time. So that's kind of a real quick summary. Like I said, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, I'll put it below on a video he did with a woman named Sarah Salmon. And uh, also it, I want you to know it's the 11th of December, but on the 14th of December this month, there's going to be uh, a a new moon solar eclipse and the solar eclipse actually we won't be able to see because it's on the other side of the world but on new moons if you've never worked with the lunar cycle it's kind of interesting a lunar cycles give us a chance to focus on what do we really want to do and where do we really want to go and actually asking you to either do a vision board or to write out an actual list of what you'd like to see manifest into your life it's kind of a law of attraction thing um, and I'm going to give you just a couple quick rules. When I read for people at my table, I used to say, okay, here's a couple quick rules how to use this new moon. Always make all your statements positive. Do not put, I don't want the, I don't want a boyfriend like my old boyfriend. Okay. Because the universe perversely does not see the word not, don't, all those negatives. What it says is I want my old boyfriend. So if you don't want your old boyfriend, your old girlfriend, your old whoever, uh, that would not help you. Uh, what you need to do is write a positive statement and actually visualize yourself sitting in the situation you want to get into, whether it's a job or being with people or a temperament or a feeling. Um, one of the things I had put is I wanted to reach more people with my readings. Well, I'm reaching more people with my readings. The more specific you are and the more clear you are about what you really want, the better the list works. You need to fill it out to have it ready on the 14th. And then on the 14th, you pull it out. You say this or something better because the universe can always give us something better than what we thought we could get. And then you sign your name. And I always date it so I can see it. But then you don't have to hang it on a mirror. You don't have to look at it. You don't have to talk to anybody else about it. It's your list, it's you and the universe. You just need to go ahead and start asking for that kind of guidance and, and be nudged along. And it's amazing what will happen. And what you can do is just stick it away and in three months, pull it out of the back of your underwear drawer or wherever you put it and look at it and see how many things have really come true because you will be amazed at what has come through on that list. So that's kind of a, a trick I tell people to focus on the positive. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the world of Wu. And the world of Wu is something I came up with. Uh, it was actually because I used to call everything, I'm in a Wu Wu. But the world of Wu was just a, a kind of a little curriculum I developed with a guy. He wanted me to come teach his employees energetic work. We never got that far. I got ideas together. We kind of bandied them around a little bit. And then the world stopped again, like I said, in February for me. So I have a lot of ideas and I kind of want to know what you're interested in. And if I have a way to get there, I'll figure it out. If I don't, if you trigger off a, a, a something, I will go look it up and try to help you guide you through it. Because I've used the, this kind of energy for a long time in my life. And 
I'm finding out when I talk to people, a lot of people, they know the change is coming. They know that their consciousness is shifting, but they don't know what to do with it. So I want to see if there's things I can do to help you with that. There's all kinds of topics. There's the crystals that I work with. There's color. There's numbers. There's sacred geometry, which has colors and numbers in it. There's um, a lot of feng shui things that are kind of fine, fun, like nine candles and the thing called the mountain of gold, which you can make, you want your own crystals, you make it out of river rocks, paint eight of them, put them by your front door. And I'll tell you how to work with that energy. Um, there's different readings and different styles of readings that you can do for people. And I can do those. If there's questions you have uh, about, as long as they're not politics, I'll read them. Um, and I act, I've done a sample of uh, Celtic Cross, a 12 month reading, which I do in December and January. And those are available if you wanna get a private reading. But if you want just a 12 month reading and, and just have be general and not being able to have feedback with me, I can do those for you. Um, we have things on body, mind and spirit. Um, a whole lot about heart energy because the energetic field around our hearts is it's much stronger than the one around our head. And there's actually a brain in our heart. And I will talk about uh, some research that's been done to show that our heart is where our intuition is. So when you say, I just got a gut feeling, well, it's because your heart's so close to your gut. And there, there's actually a lot of proof that that happens. I can tell you some little tricks that I learned along the way on how to improve your intuition, how to practice it. Um, things you can do on your own, things that can help you do. So today I'm going to kind of give you a, a real sort of a taste of the kinds of topics I can hit. When I teach Tarot, the first thing I teach is numbers, one to 10. And each of those numbers, you know, if you've followed any Tarot, it's in the minor arcana and it's, they're matched up with the suits. But the number one, and it follows a numerology to some extent, is the pioneer, the beginning, the first steps, the new place. And it's, it's pretty much what, when you think of a one, what you think of in a one. Then you go to the two. And the two is two things side by side and they're interconnected and they're communicating back and forth mm -hmm. with each other successfully or not but they're communicating back and forth with each other and it is definitely a card of communication and alliance and gaining information from somewhere um positive parts of two are like that then you get to the three and the three is like a triangle it's i'm not real great with it okay down down and then up and the triangle has the three points it's also the strongest structure in, phys in, in uh, the physical world for, you know, for how it works. Uh, it is communication and energy flows really smoothly in a triangle. It just kind of goes on its corner and then it makes a corner and keeps going round and round and round. And threes, people who have a lot of three will be good communicators. They'll be good talkers. Um, then the four, then you get to the four and the four is a square, it's clunk. Conk, 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 well, it's not a good square. Conk, 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 conk. So you keep running into corners. And when you hit those corners, they're hard stops and you have to reevaluate. So when you're in a four cycle or you have a lot of four show up in your reading, um, the four cards themselves, the four of coins is a guy who's locked up and can't move forward. The four of wands is people celebrating and having a party. So the energy, they're solving that problems in that case. Um, the Four of Swords is someone who retreats and says, I'm out of here, I'm going to go hide out for a bit. Uh, the Four of Pentacles is the one who's way down, cups, or rods, the Four of Rods, I got that one. Okay, so then we're going on to fives. Five is uh, freedom or chaos, and that doesn't have a lot in between. So if you've got a lot of cards with your fives that are 
things are moving harmoniously, it means you're in freedom. You're seeking freedom. If you get the like the five of cups, which is the guy who's standing there staring at three cups on the ground and he ignores the two that are behind him, he has his own freedom. He has to just not focus on loss. He has to focus on the chaos. He has to focus on what he can do that will move forward. Six is uh, hearth and home. And it's a time when you're looking towards some more domesticity. And the Six of Cups is actually a card of childhood remembrances or a happy, a happier time. Uh, seven is spirit. And seven is also um, analytical skills. But seven has been strongly in a lot of different faiths and a lot of different things. It is a strong number, meaning strong spirit. And it, it also can be a time in your life when you analyze a lot of stuff and come to terms with it. Eight is money and power, just flat out money and power. When you see it in the cards and you look at how it's tied into them, that's what you get from the number eight. So if you get a whole lot of eights, it means you're in a money power thing. And depending on whether they're, the cards are positive or negative, you can see, and of course, no cards really negative. It just means your attitude towards it at that point is, but you can always turn cards. It's what I love about Tarot. Don't like that card? Turn it around. Um, so that's eight, money and power. The nine is you're almost done. It's you're almost at the completion. I think one of the hardest cards in the deck is the nine of swords because you're under all the stress and pressure. It's sometimes called the card of bad dreams, insomnia. It is, it is a difficult card because you're not out of it yet. You're not out of the woods, but you are bound to that. It also can be the nine of cups. It's yeah, whatever you want, whatever you wish for, it's there ahead of you. So it's like a, you're almost the completion of a cycle. Then you get to 10 and 10 is sort of the end of the minor pips in the cups. It's 10 of people being happy. In the Ten of Swords, it's the guy traditionally lying in the snow with the Ten Swords in his back. And uh, the Ten of Pentacles is a happy, happy family. But they have, it's not just emotional satisfaction. They have money, hold it up. And the Ten of Wands is a guy who's picked up all these things as he's walked along. And now he's at the end and he's about to dump those wands and move on to new endeavors. In one tarot deck I have, the 10 of wands has been changed into Cinderella. And it's Cinderella standing in the kitchen just on the edge of going out to get her dressed to go to the ball. It's a time, but it means finished. It means you're finished, you're done. Things have concluded either happily, sadly, but they're, they're done. 10 means done. Now, we do that cycle in our own lives. And this is a numerology thing. Um, you take the month you're born, you take the day you're born and you add those digits together and you keep refining it down till you get to a, to a, between a one and a nine. So you've got it there. Then you take the year. So we're in 2020 right now and 2020 adds up to a four. So you take that four and add it with your birthday number. And that tells you what personal year you are in. So in my case, um, my birthday's in May, five. My birthday's a two, which is really easy. So I'm a seven. And a seven and a four is an 11. So I'm in a, I'm not going to do master numbers. For those who know what master numbers are, we'll get to that some other time. But it calls down to a two. And this is a year for me to go out and grow and communicate, which is exactly what I'm doing with this channel. Every person has a personal year. And you start, you, you just add them up, and you're going to go from one to nine. And then your numbers are going to go back to being one to nine again. And when you look at your nine-year cycle, it's one is your first year pioneering. You get rid of a lot of stuff. You're starting on a lot of new adventures. Two is you're bringing new people in your life or creating a much tighter bond with the people you've been with. Three is a year where you communicate, you start to consolidate all the stuff you've been doing for one and two. That, and you have three, then you get to the four year and that's the one that has the square corners and the challenges. 
and you'll meet some challenges, you'll meet some opportunities, and you'll decide what you want to keep, what you want to let go. And if you do a good job of that, when you go to your five year, you have you have freedom and a lot of fun. If you don't, you're going to have a lot of chaos because you're dragging stuff along in your life that you really don't need. Then you go into your six year and people in the six year, that's the, the year that they went and bought a home or they really decided to settle into where they were living and get all the little pieces or they did a lot of more domestic things, things that were literally higher than home, things to nurture themselves, things to nurture others. That's the six year. The seven year is a spiritual year, also an analytical year. You start to look at things and say, where do I really want to go? What do I really want to do? Eight is your money power year. So if you've worked your stuff out, you're trying to figure out how can I consolidate what I've done to make it as strong as possible? Because you're going into your nine year and what happens in a nine year is you cast off a lot of the stuff you've carried along. And people do this whether they know their year cycle. I had a guy I worked with and he came up to me and he said, uh, what's wrong with me? And I said, well, I don't know. What do you think? Why do you think something's wrong? He said, well, he said, I always said, you know, he, I noticed he'd cut his hair. He had a long ponytail kind of hair thing. It was gone. And I said, well, yeah, you cut your hair. And he said, yeah. And I've been thinking about maybe really going to work with my dad, but staying where he and I were working together because they had an opportunity for him there to learn a skill and a craft that he was very interested in. And he said, I always said I wouldn't get tied down to one or two things. And here I am. And I said, well, it sounds like you're just growing up. And he said, no, it's worse than that. He said, I've fallen in love with someone. And, and that was actually more of a shock than him cutting his hair off. But I said, really? And he said, yep. And he said, but she's got a kid. And I said, oh. And I said, and? And he said, and I really like this kid. And I always swore for my first 30 something years, I would never date a woman with a child. And I said, when did all this really start? And he said, about a month and a half ago. And I just looked at him and something told me, I said, hon, when's your birthday? His birthday was the next week. He was going from a nine year into a one year and he was getting rid of everything that was that all his false illusions he built up in those nine years. He was ditching in six weeks. He had no idea about it. So I sat down and explained numbers to him and he went, is that what's happening to me? Oh, thank God. I mean, I don't know that I always said, thank God. You know, I mean, I said, I'm still going through all these crazy changes, but he said it really kind of helped him get perspective. And then he did, and he's gone on and built a very happy life, putting all those pieces together and deciding to, in essence, kind of grow up and become a one, a, a one year. And he starts some new adventures, tries some new things. Uh, they moved in together in the two year. And so that's how numbers kind of work. That is like the most superficial numerology thing you've ever had in your life. Numerology can tell you a whole lot of wonderful things. And in case you're wondering, you can Google it. You can go look at some wonderful numerologists. I'm going to put the name of one that I actually kind of like. She's a Canadian. Her name is Ann Perry. I think she's pretty plain. I think she doesn't get too lost in the numbers. And uh, she applies it totally to um, using the energies of the universe to get ahead. So if you want to know about those sorts of topics, or if you've heard about something and you're like, I'm not sure I know what this means, or how does this all fit together, or how can I relate this, please put it down in the comments. And also while you're going down there to the comments, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends that you think also might like to participate in this because I really want to hear what you think and what you're, you have to say about things. Also, I'm still looking for questions. I'm always looking for questions so that we can create an interactive community because my garden is a place you need to come where it's safe, where you can learn how to plant your roots, where you can start your seedlings of ideas and see how they grow. It's the only thing that happens. You got to plant them, got to take a look at them. And I'm more than willing to be the nice lady in the garden that will guide you where you need to go. Anyway, thank you for 
coming to visit me today. Thank you for all the people who've subscribed in the last few days. Um, if you if you want to comment on what subjects you'd like in my wonderful world of woo, I will talk about how to understand and feel your own physical energy around you and some things I think really help because we are all going to need to be in touch with our own energy so people can't steal it or make us afraid of it and can't rule us with fear. And so I'm hoping to help cultivate that in my little garden here. And I look forward to seeing you again and have a good day. Bye-bye.